Hello, and thank you for joining this OncLive Peer Exchange, The Biology of Extending Survival in Metastatic Colorectal Cancer. Research is helping define subsets in colorectal cancer that increasingly impact everyday clinical practice. The resulting enhanced understanding of the underlying biology of the disease has led to a more nuanced treatment approach. I'm Dr. John Marshall, and I'm Professor in Chief of the Division of Hematology Oncology at Georgetown University Hospital, and I'm the Director of the Roosh Center for the Cure of GI Cancers in Washington, D.C. In this OncLive Global Peer Exchange, I welcome our panel of international experts in gastrointestinal cancers who will discuss today's evidence-based strategies in advanced disease. The discussion will also include emerging data in immunotherapy, targeted therapy, and an update in tumor sightedness. Joining this discussion are very good friends of mine, Dr. Dirk Arnold, a medical oncologist, professor, and the head of the Instituto Cuf de Oncologia in Lisbon, Portugal, and he's a professor of medicine at the University of Hamburg in Germany. Second, Dr. Fortunato Ciardiello, full professor of medical oncology and director of the Department of Clinical and Experimental Medicine at Seconda Università di Napoli in Naples, Italy. Dr. Paul Helft, longtime friend, professor of medicine for the Division of Hematology Oncology at the Indiana School of Medicine in Indiana University, Melvin and Bryn Simon Cancer Center in Indianapolis, Indiana. And Dr. Tony Bakai Saab, Professor, Mayo Clinic College of Medicine and Science, co-leader of the GI Cancer Program at the Mayo Clinic Cancer Center in Arizona. And thank you guys for making it here on an early morning here in Chicago at ASCO. It's been a big meeting, a um, lot of important stuff emerging around colon cancer. Our audience out there wants to know how this stuff impacts their day-to-day -day treatment. So let's dive right in. I want to start with what to me has just totally changed my practice. I didn't sign up to take care of kids with colon cancer. I got a 17 year old with stage three colon cancer. We're all seeing an emergence of these young folks with, with colon cancer. Paul, tell us a little bit about what you're seeing and some of the emerging data around young people with colon cancer. Yeah, this is really an interesting story. And if you would ask those of us who've always practiced in academic medical centers, we always thought that colon cancer was a disease of younger people, in fact, because on average we see patients 10 to 20 years younger than the, than the median for, uh, uh, for, our, the, for U.S. adults. And the same is largely true in European centers as well. Um, but it's very clear, um, even though uh, data had suggested for decades that, uh, at least in U.S. populations, the median age uh, uh, of incidence of uh, colorectal cancer has been relatively stable around 70. Younger people are getting it more often. And in fact, uh, if you look at the population at large, uh, as many as 50 percent of an increase in patients overall under the age of 50, which is the age, at least in U.S. adults, where we begin to screen patients uh, for colorectal cancer in the first place. Yeah, Dirk Fortunato, is this happening in your practice too, or is this a U.S. problem? Is this too many Big Macs? Mm -hmm. I am afraid that this is a problem that will become more and more worldwide. I don't know the causes. Could be that also in Europe we are using the Anglo-Saxon American style of uh, eating, mm. and so we are not using the Mediterranean diet that is protecting us much more than uh, happens with uh, a diet that is very rich in uh, meat. Uh, I don't know. But uh, really, uh, we are seeing uh, younger and younger uh, patients, although in the general population, still the prevalence is in patients 60 to 65 years or older. So basically, we will face two different groups of patients, very young patients, and patients that are in the elderly um, stage of their life. And then we will have the problems if they are fit or not, if there are other comorbidities that are always very often in this uh, age of patients. So basically, we will have two different types of patients yeah. that we have to deal with. And also, the way to screen the general population will become a, yeah, we'll a talk major about issue. That, but, you know, is this something molecular? So the first question I always have when I have a, any patient nowadays, but a young patient is, are they MSI high? And, most of the time, no. They're n these they're are not, not Lynch right, cancer, right, no. right. Lynch syndrome patients, right? Right. right. No, that's that's true. And just to add, if you go, uh, let's say, to the Gulf region, or if you go to the foreign Middle East, you have even younger population. They have a very, they have a high proportion of patients within the end of twenties, on the thirties, been diagnosed with colon cancer. So, and as you completely said, genetically, this is not understood. It's not a typical alteration. It's not a typical germline mutation or whatever we do see, uh, which explains this phenomenon. 
And when we compare, say, big next-gen sequencing of young versus old, we're not seeing some great big different pattern. It's, uh, it's colon cancer like we know it, but it's not, not very different. Right. Should we change our screening guidelines? What, so in, in Europe, you guys are screening, what, at 50? Yes. Yeah, and colonoscopy, right. or is it fecal occult blood, or where, where no, are you with we, that? Uh, uh, fecal blood uh, uh, testing is the first step, at mm. least in Italy. And then, uh, if it's positive, we go to colonoscopy. Portugal, Germany, what no, do you do? Germany, this? it's, it's a colonoscopy country, so we say <laughs> we, offer <a> colon <laughs> we, do, we do offer colonoscopy to, to anyone in the age of 50 or older, and we skip these fecal occult blood testing, or only offer it to those individuals which do not like to undergo colonoscopy. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, the pickup rate for colonoscopy is not great, so yeah. therefore this stresses the necessity to have a stepped approach first do potentially a fecal or a blood or whatever mm -hmm. test and then have colonoscopy to increase acceptance rate, although it's offered. Yeah, so now that's why occult blood testing in the feces is done in Italy because otherwise the, uh, the acceptance in the general population would be very, very low. The yeah, you certainly get higher acceptance, yeah, it, it's yeah. cheaper, yeah. it's proven benefit. Yeah. And we are, of course, colonoscopy country And the positivity too. in general is between 10 and 20%. Yeah. And then only 10 to 20% of people screen at the gone to endoscopy.